Thank you for watching this sermon from Kings Park International Church. Be sure to check out the other sermons in this series as well. Good morning, everybody. Good to see your faces. Thank you for those who are worshiping with us online. Happy New Year to you all again. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to check this out on social media, I, uh, we, we sent a word out that I had. It's about 13 minutes long uh, for, for this upcoming year, for 2022. Uh, and that, that the, the word is summarized in this phrase, breakthrough in 2022. So check it out on Instagram, Facebook. Um, We have it on our website. Uh, I believe that it's a word for you. How many of you want to see breakthrough in 2022? I I think we're going to see it. I I spent three months really praying into it, and that's what the Lord gave me. And honestly, it's a continuation of something he already uh, gave us back in July, what, what we talked about, and moving forward. So it's really a continuation of that word. So I encourage you to check that out. Uh, This today, this morning, we're going to start a new series uh, that is going to join us with our Every Nation family, uh, global family across the world that's in 83 nations currently. Uh, And as well as uh, us getting a word for our church, our Every Nation global family has a word for uh, our family across the world this year, and it's really summed up in one word itself, and that word is abide. Uh, And that word abide just simply means to remain. Now, for this year, what are your goals? What are your New Year's resolution? What are are they? I'm just curious for you to to think about that and ponder that for a moment. Uh, And and even to know that, maybe you can even, if you're watching online, you can put some of those in the chat. Like, what's your New Year's resolutions? You know, hopefully they have to do with maybe knowing God better. Anyone have that one? You want to know God more. Anyone, you, you want to grow personally and spiritually in your life. Anyone have that one? You know, what, what about this one? Any of you want to discover more of what God has for you to accomplish and what he wants you to do? Uh, maybe, maybe you want to see your life impact more people for the glory and the kingdom of God, what, whatever it may be. Here's what I want to tell you. One of the greatest ingredients and tools that you can have to help you accomplish those particular resolutions that I just mentioned is for you to abide. And we're going to talk about this. Folks, I believe that abiding is one of the major keys to us seeing breakthrough in 2022. As we abide in the presence of God, the person of who he is, and also in God's word, we're going to see some incredible things happen this year. And we're going to take the next several weeks to focus on that. Now, the first thing we have to start off with when we think about abiding is that we can only abide in God because God first came to abide with us. And he came in Jesus Christ. And what we're going to find is as we go through this particular message and look at the scriptures is that the creator of all things, the word who became flesh, invites us to know him. And that will be our focus for this particular time this morning. Let's take a moment to pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Lord, we thank you that the name of Jesus is a beautiful name because he is the word who became flesh, the creator of all things. And Lord, we pray that we would receive with the way we should, with honor, and we would see it as a privilege to know you. Lord, help us to do that in this year, in 2022, and to increase in that as we grow spiritually and personally and make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. 
the creator of all things, the word who became flesh invites us to know him. I want us to break that down for a moment. The creator of all things. Let's just pause for a moment there. That's, that's an important phrase. Uh, I mean, this is why it's important. Uh, it's, it's what we believe about Jesus is just is more important than just believing in Jesus. Uh, it, it, you can say, I believe in Jesus, great. I mean, honestly, demons believe in Jesus. But it's not about you believing in Jesus, but it's what you believe about Jesus. Who is Jesus? Because but what we believe about a person determines how we'll relate to that person. Think about this. If you know a guy named Ray or Ray Ray, however you want to say it, doesn't matter. But you know him. And let's say you don't consider that person trustworthy or kind. You're going to treat him in a particular way. But if you believe that he's kind and he's trustworthy, you, you treat him in another way. See, what we believe about Jesus determines how we interact with him. And this is so important as we dig into the fact that, that we find that Jesus is, in fact, the creator of all things. And John, throughout his gospel, he's wanting us to understand some things about who Jesus is, pointing to this very fact. In John 20, the very last, uh, as he's getting ready to wrap up the book, one of the last things that he says about the purpose or intention of the book is this in John 20, 31. But these are written, all of these things that he just wrote about in the life of Christ are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the Messiah, he is the Son of God. And that by believing, you may have life in his name. See, my faith for us today is that we will not just learn about Jesus, but we will experience Jesus and the living word in our lives as we get into this series, as we dig into the word today, that God himself will show us himself through his word, that we will experience him. I believe that God wants us to have an experience, not just something we know in our minds. And that's the beauty of what we find in scriptures, that Jesus came so that we could know him in a real way. If we look here in John chapter one, verse one through three, what we find is the very first thing that John wants us to know about Jesus. What's, what's the most important thing you need to know is this very first, we find it in the, in the first chapter of John. The very first thing he says is, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. So in this passage, we see Word referenced many times. And that, that Word is logos or logos. And, and, and it's, it's, speaking, it's spoken 300 times in the New Testament. But in this particular chapter, it's different. It's, it means something different. What's different about it is that we find in this chapter that it isn't just the spoken word of God like it is so many times in the other uh, 200 plus times in the New Testament. But this time, this word is actually was there in the beginning. This word was with God. This word was God. This word, everything was created through this word. So this word is, 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 is more than just something spoken. This word is the embodiment of who God is. So this is pointing us to something greater about this word. In fact, there's a, there's a connection here that's found between this passage and the first chapter of Genesis that I want you to notice here as we look at some of the similarities between John chapter 1 and Genesis 1. Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 
And God saw that light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. So in the first account of creation, Genesis account here, in the very first chapter, we find that the word is responsible for bringing about creation. That's very consistent to what John just told us. In fact, seven other times you're going to hear, and God said, and God said, and God said, and that's speaking of the word. The word is powerful. But I want you to also notice something else that's happening here. One of the first things that the word does in the creation account is the word comes in and deals with darkness. In fact, through the word, light is separated out of the darkness, and that, that, is, that is so very important for us to understand because John is going to say here in verse 4 and 5 that in him, in this word, was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So here's what you see happening. In the Genesis account, it says that, that the word comes and brings light to darkness. What's happening is that darkness is, is the, the, another word for that is chaos or confusion or disorder and dysfunctionality. And so there's all this dysfunction, chaos, disorder, and everything's going on here that, that's bad, that's negative. And, and what's happening is that creation is not able to accomplish its purpose and to bring glory to God. But then the word comes, and the word comes in, and, and, and all of a sudden, life and light happens. And now there's clarity, there's truth, there's functionality, there's order, and creation can now fulfill the very purpose that God had for it, and we had intended for it. And so then John tells us, wait a minute, the word actually came down into the earth in the form of Jesus Christ. And there was darkness, there was confusion in people's lives, and they were stuck in disorder and disarray and dysfunction. And the word came and brought life. And this word was the life. In other, in other words, this word was the embodiment of what it means to truly live as, as, as a human being. This word literally is the source of life, and life exudes out of this word, and when the word comes, all of a sudden light comes, clarity, truth, order, alignment, and now we, people, can fulfill their God-given purpose. Aren't you grateful for the word of God? This is the word. He comes down. He enters into, the creator of all things enters into our lives, brings this light. I'm so glad he did this for me. I'll never forget as a 15-year-old being confused, not understanding my purpose, operating in, in, in a dysfunctional way in my relationships, lying and cheating and stealing and manipulating and, and doing things that were hurting and harming my relationships with people, doing things I felt shameful about and guilty about and even experienced some condemnation. And I remember being stuck in that until the light came. The word of God came into my life and someone's preached the word to me. They shared the good news with me and that word brought light to my darkness where I was dark, light came. I started to understand the truth and it totally, totally changed things around for me. I found purpose. I, I found truth. I, I found order and alignment in my life. Now for you, aren't you so glad that God came into your life? If you know him, you should give him praise right now because where would you be without the word? Where would you be without the light? The light of the glory of Christ has come and has brought true life to us. We don't have to walk in deadness, being dead in our sins and trespasses where we're separated from this life. He came and he brought light. 
What's interesting about this, though, is that not everybody responds to the light. Not everybody responds to the word the same way. In fact, the fact that the word could come and reveal himself and be present, and yet people respond all types of different ways to him except for receiving him, shows the condition of our hearts, shows that that there's sin there. There's something that's not right and in alignment. We find in John chapter 1, verse 5, it says, many times in, in how people responded to the word, the darkness did not comprehend it. The world did not know it, John 1.10. He came to his own, John 1.11, and they did not receive him. Over and over again, there's this response where the word could be present, could be active, could be living, could be working, and yet we miss it. Because there's something going on in our hearts that's not allowing us to receive the light, the truth. It's something that that is making us and keeping us stuck in this confusion, disorder. That something's called sin. But the word comes to bring light, to bring us into true life. I think this is so important for us to grasp that the word comes And all of a sudden, where we've been dark, there's light that shines. I was just thinking about how the the word becoming flesh, and we could look at this in in John 1.14. It says, the word became flesh and dwelled among us, and we have seen his glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth, John 1.14. Powerful passages, the word became flesh. The word became flesh. Yes, the creator of all things, the word became flesh. And he dwelled among us. I was thinking about how so many times, you know, we can have something right in front of us, but yet we're missing it. And this is what we find happening so many times. I've I've literally had moments where I've been looking for my phone. You know what I mean? And it it was like in my hand. And I, anybody, I know, have you ever had that happen to you? Or, you know, all the time, I'm not going to talk b- about my wife, but just, where's my phone at? In your purse, where it always is. It's just buried under the stuff. But the word right in front of us, but yet we're like, we're like looking for it. Look, we have light. If you feel darkness, if you feel like you're in a place of confusion, you're a place of uncertainty, the word comes and it brings light. But man, we can't miss the word. We have to see it. I was thinking about this this show that came out a few years back called Undercover Boss. You ever seen that show? Uh, I I love that show when I I would love watching it. And one of my favorite episodes was a 7-Eleven episode where this main CEO, the the boss of the entire company, entire franchise comes and just puts on clothes just like everybody else, not on a suit, works like everyone else does his thing. And he finds out that there are some people who are not doing good and finds out that there's some that, that is, that is doing a lot of great. Uh, good things. And it's just interesting to watch the reaction, but, the, but, but, but he's right in front of them. And you know what happens is that when he finally uncovers himself, man, the people who like did good, man, they get blessed. They get scholarships and they get all types of stuff. And, and the people who did not do well, well, they don't, they don't, it doesn't work out well for them. All right. Now, so, so, and that makes sense, right? But here's the thing is that we have an opportunity to recognize that the word is, has become flesh in Jesus Christ and we will not miss our opportunity and we can respond to him correctly and be on the side of those who receive the blessing. Amen for that. The word became flesh and he dwells among us. I love that particular wording. The word dwells among us. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. But the fact that the word became flesh, man, that, that just, that's like a scandalous to so many people. Like believing that God, the God of the universe, put on human flesh and became a person? Sometimes that's so hard to believe. But man, it is such a beautiful and incredible mystery. And the question is for us is why would he do that? 
Why would the word become flesh? The one who was with God, the one who was God, the one through whom everything was created. Why would that happen? Ultimately, it's really for one reason. It's so that we can know him. I love what Rice Brooks' gospel version says that he came out with a summation of the gospel that we'll actually stand together and and read together. It says that the, the, the gospel is the good news that God became a man in Jesus Christ. What a powerful thing has happened. But it's all so that you and I could know him. That's what he wants. There's three things in John in this first chapter we find that help us to understand this fact as he invites us to know him, the creator of all things, the world who became flesh. There's three things that confirm the fact that he invites us to know him. The first one is that the creator of all things came near to us so that we could know him. In John 1, 14, it says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. So he came close to us. He came near to us so that we could actually know him. It's just like if, if you wanted to get to know someone more, you wouldn't like stand aloof from them. You would actually come close to them and you'd show up to their house, invited, right, invited, you know, you, you, would, you, would, you would be at different events with them, whatever it may be, but you'd come close to them so that you can know him, they can, you can know that person and that person can know you. I love what one of the key theologians and church fathers said, Athanasius, he said this, even so was it with the all holy son of God He, the image of the Father, came and dwelt in our midst in order that he might renew mankind made after himself and seek out his lost sheep. Even as he says in the gospel, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. I love it. He came to dwell with us. That phrase, dwell, translates into one word, which is eskenosin. And it means to pitch a tent or to encamp. Now, this is significant because if we look backwards, we look backwards in the Bible in Exodus, uh, what we find is that as the Israelites came out of Egypt, they set up something called a tabernacle. They pitched a tent. And in that tabernacle was the presence of God that was symbolized through the Ark of the Covenant. And so we find that that's what they followed around in order to know where they were supposed to go. And so you have this word, dwell, means that God dwelt with the Israelites and he's going to dwell with us in Christ like he did with them. But then it not only points us back, but it also points us forward to something. And Revelation chapter 21 Verse three, it says, behold, the tabernacle of God is among men. He will dwell among them and they shall be his people and God himself will be among them. Praise God. This is where we're headed. This is the epitome. It is, it is the zenith of all things that we should desire is that God would dwell in our midst. This is how it would be. When heaven and earth pass away as we know it, and there's a new heaven and a new earth, as we just talked about in our previous series, in our Advent series, that God is, Jesus is coming again to establish this, and he is going to dwell with us. We will see him face to face, and praise God, we'll be just like him because we will see him face to face. Praise God for that. We're going to dwell with him, and he will dwell with us forever. The creator of all things, the word who became flesh, invites us to know him. And he does so by coming near to us. He also does this by revealing himself to us. He reveals himself to us so that we can know him. I'll never forget watching the Wizard of Oz and, and, and seeing that, that the wizard was behind the curtain. God's not like that wizard. 
you know, where, where you can't figure out who God is. People all over the earth trying to figure out, man, who is God? How is he? What does he think about me? They have all these questions about God. And here's what we see in John. John is saying that if you want to know who God is, then just look at Jesus. Because Jesus is God. Jesus has fully explained who he is. It says here in John 1.18, no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten who is in the bosom of the Father, he has explained him. We can know God by looking at Jesus. The reality reality is we don't know God as we should. God himself was willing to humble himself and become a man so that we can know him. And all throughout the gospel of John, what we find is that Jesus is revealing himself in one way, revealing himself in another way, and we get a chance to see who he is. And as he ends his, as he gets to the point where he's getting ready to die on the cross and his, his life is getting ready to end as, as on, on the planet, as being present on the planet, of course, he resurrects from the dead and he ascends to heaven. But here's what we find. This conversation takes place right before the crucifixion. One of his disciples, Philip, says, Lord, why don't you show us the Father? In other words, we want to know who God is, and that'll be enough. Now, wait, Jesus is like, now, wait a minute. How long have I been with y'all? About three and a half years. I've been raising the dead. I've been healing sick people. I've been giving you teachings that are off the charts. I mean, authority, power, explaining mysteries to you, and you still don't get it? You can hear Jesus' frustration comes out. Jesus said, have I been with you so long? And you still don't know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me, Jesus said, has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Jesus is frustrated. He was a fully human as well. He experienced emotions. And he had to process and express his emotions. This one, he was frustrated. He's Philip, come on now. Come on, what what do I need to do? I know, I know what I got to do. Now, the last thing is I got to levitate and flow out of here in order for you to believe this. And you know what? He does that for him. He gets a chance to see that. Philip, come on. Listen. I have fully revealed to you who God is. There's no longer a mystery. I and the Father are one. This is what Jesus says. Because I want you to know me. And I want you to know him. The third thing is the creator of all things gives us the opportunity to receive him. He gives us the opportunity to receive him. What we find here in John 1, 12, it says, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. God God is not just simply in uh, revealing Jesus so that somehow we would just have more head knowledge. We'd be able to say, oh, I know this about Jesus. I know this about when he came and when he died and I know the facts. Or he didn't simply... Reveal Jesus to us in this particular manner so that we could continue to say, well, I know him, but we're still stuck in our darkness and in our situation. He revealed Jesus to us so that we could come out of darkness into his light and become his children so that we would be given the right to be called sons and daughters of the most high God, of of the Father. And he does this as the Holy Spirit. When we put our trust in Jesus, we believe in his name. His name is everything that Jesus is, everything that God is, and everything that he has accomplished for us by dying on the cross for our sins so that we could be in relationship with him. And he says when we put our trust in him and we believe in his name, then he gives us the right to become his children. The Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and he brings us into a spiritual union with Christ. And we're able to receive all the blessings and the wonderful benefits that come with being children of the creator of all things who became flesh on our behalf. Praise God for all the blessings 
he brings. The salvation that comes as a result of becoming his children. The creator of all things, the word who became flesh, invites us to know him. So how do we know him? When we look at this year, how do we respond to this? I want to speak very directly to you about this because I believe that we need to orient ourselves this year to what God would be doing. I I spoke that word earlier, that that we're going to see breakthrough in 2022. I really believe that. But breakthrough is going to come as we abide in God. And how, how, how do we do that? Because the word came and he abided with us. What should be our response? The first thing we should do is we need to draw near to him. We need to draw near to God. In fact, James 4, 8 says, draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. We need to draw near to him. How do we do that? We do that through worshiping. We give God praise and honor. When we come in on Sunday morning, we need to pour out our hearts and worship to God. Maybe you don't know how to do that. What's however you're led by the spirit to do it. In the Bible, we see clapping. In the Bible, we see lifting of hands. We see dancing. We see silence. We see all of these different things. However it is. We pour out our hearts, and we do it not just in this church uh, and this Sunday gathering. We do it beyond that throughout the week. We also also uh, draw near to God through prayer. We say, God, I want to be in conversation with you. It's just like anyone. You have a relationship with them. If you're going to have a healthy, strong relationship, you communicate, right? Prayer is us communicating with God, but also us listening to God so he can communicate with us. It's both. And so we draw near to him through prayer. We also draw near to him with something called fasting in prayer. And in a week, roughly, on January 10th, we're going to start our fast for the year. Uh, We're joining with our Every Nation churches globally to fast for five days. And we're going to focus on God. We're going to abstain from something, whatever that may be, some type of food that, that, that we love. There, it's it, it not, not one that will violate our dietary restrictions, but something that, will, uh, that we will feel, that we'll know is absent. But we're saying, God, I'm abstaining from that so I can focus on you. Because I'm believing for breakthrough to happen. So we draw near to God. Another thing is is we embrace the explanation and the revelation that God has given us through Christ and his word. That means we read and engage our Bibles every single day. This year, every day. Let's make it a goal. If that's not a part of your resolution, make it a part of your resolution. Engage the Bible every day. Listen to the Bible. Read the Bible, however you want to do it. Find a Bible reading plan to read through the entire Bible. If you've never read through the whole Bible, this is your time to do that. Start now. Get on the plan. Do it. Maybe you, you choose to do it another way. Maybe you meditate on something. I, I, I'm memorizing some of the apostolic prayers and the meditating on them and letting them go deep into my heart. But however we do it, this is how the word abides in us and we abide in the word is when that Bible gets into our hearts and it becomes a part of the very fabric of who we are and how we see things. So we embrace the explanation of the revelation of Jesus Christ and God himself through the word. We draw near to him. He draws near to us. And the last thing we do is we, we, we need to receive him as the creator of all things and as our Lord and our Savior as we put our trust in him. If you're a follower of Christ, you might say, well, I've done that already. Well, let me just tell you that trusting God is a daily decision. Every day, You have to make the choice that I am going to trust God. And not just for one thing, not just for when I show up on Sunday morning. I'm trusting God today that I can receive something. No, it's trusting God when you go home and you're in your marriage and God reminds you or you're reminded through the scripture that you need to treat your spouse just like Jesus would treat them. That's trusting God on a day-to-day basis. It's when you're a student and, and you ask God, God, what's your agenda? Not, God, hey, I have an agenda and you can be a part of that agenda. But it's, no, God, 
What is your agenda? What do you want to accomplish through me this year? It's when you're at work and you're able to say, God, what is it that you want to do through this work? Whether you're in the marketplace or you're a caregiver or wherever you may be at this particular point, but you're saying, God, how can I follow you and see great things happen through my work situation? Or maybe you're out of work and you're retired. Well, listen, you can dream. You can sleep in now, I guess, and do all the time. Dream more dreams, but also ask God, God, how can I contribute to seeing the next generation know you? Whatever it may be, as a believer, we are called to renew our commitment and our trust to God every year and every day. And if you're not a believer today, you don't know God today, then the way that you receive him as the creator of all things, as the word who became flesh, the way you do that is by repenting of your sins. That means you turn away from your sin and you say, I'm no longer going to live for myself. I'm no longer going to rebel against God. I no longer am going to do wrong and seek my self-interest and hurt people. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to love God and love people. And I'm going to put my trust in the work that Jesus Christ did for me by dying on the cross. It was on the cross where he took on your sins, my sins, all of the things we've done wrong the shame, the guilt, and everything I talked about that I experienced. It was all on the cross that he took it on. He took it away from me. And he exchanged that and gave me his righteousness and his freedom. And now I can live with life and light and not in darkness. The creator of all things, he is the word who became flesh and he invites us to know him. I believe that breakthrough is going to come. God spoke this phrase, breakthrough in 2022. I believe it. But I want to tell you, one of the keys to that happening is us abiding. If you could do this whether you're watching online, in person here, if you could stand to your feet. I want us to read and declare the gospel together in this moment. This is, as we declare this, we're renewing what we believe about Jesus because what we believe about him determines how we relate to him. So let's read this together. The gospel is the good news that God became a man in Jesus Christ. He lived the life we should have lived. He died the death we should have died in our place. After three days, he rose from the dead, proving that he is the son of God. He ascended to heaven to reign over all. He offers forgiveness of sins and the gift of salvation to all those who repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Now, as a way of renewing your commitment to Jesus for this year in 2022, and for those of you who are present, that maybe you have never followed Christ, maybe you have never given your heart to him and given your life to him, this is your opportunity. Maybe you identify with with me. You were in darkness and confusion. You were lost. You just feel this. You feel separated from God. You feel shame. You feel condemnation. Jesus wants to bring you his light. The Bible tells us if we believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord, the creator of all things, and we confess with our mouths, then we'll be saved. Light will come. Together can we, family, pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you 
for creating and loving me. I confess I've sinned and I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, I believe you died for my sins and you rose from the dead. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for making me a new person. Now, Holy Spirit, empower me to follow you and to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the things that I really appreciate with this particular message or that spoke to me the most is how God spoke, let there be light, and there was light into darkness. And I think that a lot of us, maybe we found ourselves in situations where they feel like there's confusion or there's, it's just chaotic or we've spiraled into something and we keep telling ourselves, how did I get here? This is not where I'm supposed to be. This is not what I thought. And I just want to encourage you this morning that every challenge that you're facing, there is a solution in the Word of God. The Word of God has an answer for your problems. The trick or the deception is that somehow we have bought into this lie or some of us have bought into this lie or this thought that the Bible is irrelevant. And I want to speak to all of us today and I want to encourage you that this year, just as Pastor Reggie said, let the Bible be in which you look at the world with. Let the Word of God be the thing that determines your outlook or determines the trajectory of how you see your life. And, and for you teenagers, my youth, I just want to tell you something. The Bible is not boring. We sometimes are just boring people. And we need to ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate the Word of God and to help us apply it to our context. Because God was, is, and is to come. So He knew every challenge that we are going to face. And for every problem, again, there's a kingdom solution. But in order to understand that kingdom solution is you need to get the Word of God. So I want us here at Kings Park just to be a church that believes the Bible, but does what it says. We don't just read it because we want to check it off. We read it because it applies to our lives and we do what it says and we see the glory of God in everything that we do. So can I just pray for you that, the, that when you read the Bible, that there'll be, there'll be a hunger to read the Bible, but also that God will give revelation to every circumstance, every question that you have and make it relatable to your context. If that's you, if you're like, yes, I want the Bible not to be boring. I want God to illuminate his word. I just want you to put your hand on your heart or raise your hand. And I'm going to pray for you this morning. And for those watching online, please do the same thing as well. Heavenly Father, I thank you that your word is life. That your word is life. You are the bread of life. And so, Lord, I just pray this morning that, God, would you give us a hunger for your word? Lord, would you give us a desire to open up the pages? And even though we at first, maybe last week or yesterday, we looked at it and it was just all confusing. Lord, I pray that you will open up our eyes. You would open up our hearts. And all of a sudden, it will begin to make sense by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you would illuminate who you are, that there will be such a desire as we get into your word, where we begin to relate to our circumstances. We can take that word and apply it to our circumstances. I pray for the strength, Lord Jesus, not just to read, but to do that word so we can experience your power, experience your presence, experience your provision and the purpose that you have for us in the name of Jesus. And I pray specifically for our youth. Lord, I ask God that you will put in them a hunger that only you could have done so. God, where they open up that Bible and they begin to understand what it means for them and in their context. I pray, God, that in Jesus' name, they will not be lured or, or, or de deceived by the things of this world. But God, they'll be motivated, impacted, moved, and just led by the Holy Spirit and by the power of your word. Lord, we pray this, God, so that our ceiling, when it comes to knowing you, will come, will become their floor. Because God, you would take them to greater places that we could even imagine. Lord, I pray, do a work, not just in our youth, but in our hearts, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Um, praise God.
I've asked the uh, elders to come and join, uh, join me here uh, as we just bless you for this new year. If you could just lift up your hands if you uh, have the ability to do so. If not, it's fine. Uh, you can uh, hold them out as if you're receiving something. We just want to bless you. Uh, Lord, we thank you so much that your word for this year is breakthrough in 2022. I pray for breakthrough in the lives of every single person. Lord, the type of breakthrough, Lord God, that brings about your power. Lord, your power to strengthen their relationships and to make them healthy and strong and well, to bless their marriages in Jesus' name, to give them the ability to overcome plaguing issues, Lord God, that have tried to keep them in bondage. I thank you, Father, for your power that will come and bring breakthrough. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your protection over them. Lord, keep them, Lord God, from COVID-19, from sickness and disease and other illnesses and things that would try to bring about harm. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that whatever the devil plans to, for them, that his plans will come to nothing in the name of Jesus Christ and that the devil will be crushed under their feet as they continue to accelerate and grow personally and mature in Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless them by the power of the Holy Spirit to experience your peace in their lives, your purpose. Lord, let light come and bring truth and clarity like never before in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that your provision would come, that there would be breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ where those who have been suffering in the areas of finances and finding jobs, Lord, we pray for breakthrough right now by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you today that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Lord, we lean on you and we trust you for that. And Lord, we thank you most importantly for your presence. Lord, we pray that your presence would saturate us when we're in our car, when we're trans doing our transportation, when we're in our showers, when we're in our homes, Lord God, when we're eating, when we're at work, we ask for your presence to come and that through your presence we would experience joy and pleasures forevermore. We thank you and we bless you. And Lord, we ask that every month of this year, January, that they would be blessed. We thank you for blessing in February. We thank you for blessing in March, in April, in May, in June, July, in August, in September, in October, in November, and December. Will we bless your people in Jesus' name? Amen. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions or prayer requests, please email us at infokingspark.org or message us on one of our social media channels. If you would like to give, you can do so by visiting kingspark.org giving or by downloading the Kings Park app.